Hello everyone, this is Yusuf from ArabsOnMade.com and today we have a special guest with us, the three-time King of Pancrase and the first ever UFC heavyweight champion, Bas Rutan. Bas, how are you? It's an absolute honor. I, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm doing great. It's a, I, actually, I found that out like half a year ago that I was the first UFC heavyweight champion. <laughs> no <laughs> I didn't kidding. even realize. Somebody told me. I go, really? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you you didn't know that before? It was sort of just... Uh... Yeah, I thought I was just the UFC heavyweight champion. I didn't know it was the vacant, but now I thought when I think about it, I, I remember again because it was Maury Smith uh -huh. fighting uh, oh Pete, 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 uh, Sal, oh no, what is his name? Pete from, from the Lions Den. He was fighting and I was fighting in Kosaka and the winners would... Oh no, of course, uh, Maury Smith was fighting Kevin Randleman. And then I was fighting Chiyoshi Kosaka, and the winners were going to fight each other for the heavyweight title. That's how it was. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so what have you been up to recently? I mean, uh, you know, we, we see you on your weekly MMA show, Inside MMA, and uh, of course the movies now. Uh, any, anything coming up in the pipeline? You know, I, I just did a movie. You know, the last time we were talking, you saw I had a beard. Yeah. And that was uh, for, the, for the movie. So um, it's, an, um, it's a family movie in where I'm an, uh, uh, the coach, a baseball coach for a minor league team. So it, it was a script when I read it. I really liked it. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a super big part, but it's a good part. And, an, uh, and there was almost five pages of dialogue for me in one scene. And that, that really got my attention. I go, you know what? That's me wow. four and a half minutes talking. Yeah. I said, I want to see if I can do that because that was pretty gnarly, you know, that uh, – and it worked out. It worked out great. It was, I had a lot of fun doing it. That's amazing. Is that coming out anytime soon or is it uh, still in post-production? Uh, post-production is going to be spring uh, 2014. Apparently they, in spring you know, they, they're screaming for sports movies. Ah, okay. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. That, that's, that's awesome. We'll be looking forward to seeing that one. Um, we recently got to spend two days with you in, in Dubai. Uh, I think that was about last month or, or about six weeks ago. What was that like for you? Was that kind of like uh, how you expected the Middle East to be? No, no, absolutely not. You know, it's a uh, very, uh, you know, how it goes. You know, the media, how everything goes. You know, you always think like, oh, that everybody hates the Americans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, and you realize that's absolutely not the truth. You know, and, and when you when I walked through the big mall there, yeah. you know, the big mall, that I, my my hotel was there. I mean, I got stopped the whole time by people. Yeah. You know, yeah. hey man, can we make pictures? I was, uh, you know, was, uh, I was blown away. It was really cool. And then talking to you guys, and it's the same everywhere there, you know. So that's what you see, what, 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 what simple TV can do and, uh, and interviews or whatever, people talking. That's true. Well, was it, was it uh, surprising for you to be recognized so far away from home? I mean, all the way in, in Dubai. I remember uh, there was a chap at, a, at the bookstore who stopped you. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, also, yeah, and, th and then at the bookstore, I saw that book from uh, Uriah Faber, I made yeah. a picture, and I texted it to him, I said, dude, you're in here, you're in Dubai in the bookstore, how cool is that? <laughs> so and when I came in, just before I went to the hotel, I saw this big place, and it had U all these UFC fighters on top of it, some sports store, I guess, yeah. and that's when I realized, ah, okay, so they're uh, into the UFC here as well, so, and then when I walked through the mall to get some food before I went to sleep and yeah, that's when people start stopping me so uh, no yeah that's always cool to hear man it's always cool to uh, find out that's brilliant I mean I mean hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of you soon in, in this part of the world um, you, uh, you you mentor a local MMA fighter from Kuwait um, Ahmed Busayri uh, yeah how, how did that start you know, it started a long time ago that my uh, he contacted my wife first, I believe, and uh, for some stuff. And and you know, uh, many times when when I hear that some fighters they are looking really into to getting started, and, and and some of them, you know, they don't have too much money, and yeah. you know, so then uh, I'll always connect with those guys, and then uh, you know, I send them free stuff. So then I say, okay, well, if you don't have really a teacher, I can send you the big DVDs of combat, you know, and, and, and the boss with the workout, which is a really great workout, but I yeah. mean, you, you name them, they do it. I mean, Rashad Allen, John Jones, Randy Couture, I, anybody does that. It's an audio workout. And um, those things, and especially now with the O2 trainer that I have, that long training device, you know, I send that so he gets better shape. And I told him right away, you know, I said, um, uh, a long time ago, 
was um oh my god what's his name uh he won the first ultimate fighter he was in the no he not uh, diego sanchez okay diego sanchez before the ultimate fighter he would send me videotapes that's how long ago it was yeah this was yeah. i was like three years in the united states so i'm talking about 13 uh 12 13 years ago yeah. And uh, he would say, listen, Boz, I'm a big fan. Can you please look at my fight and tell me what I have to work on? And I said, okay. You know, and, and, and I heard that Ahmed heard about that story. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly out of the blue, he sent me his fight. He says, man, I know you're very busy. I heard you did this in the past. Uh -huh. Are you willing to look for me and to see what I have to work on? And, and that's how it started. You know, I wrote him a couple of pages. I said, well... Make sure you don't do this anymore and work on this. And this you do really well, so let's improve there also. And, yeah. you know, then I start sending him stuff. And, yeah, one thing led to another. And now he's in the finals. It's amazing. He is. He's going to be fighting for the title on the uh, 15th of June. Uh, and, and truth be told, and I'm not saying this because, you know, because um, I'm speaking to you, but everyone here at Ahmed's last fight was astounded with his performance, which was miles above the ones before that. His cardio was awesome. Uh, his striking overall, he was more aggressive. He was better on the ground. Uh, were, were there any particular tips you'd given given him against his last opponent, or was it sort of an overall? You know, you got to improve. No, no, I did a bunch of tips. You know, it was a little lazy with uh, yeah. punching. You know, like uh, let a punch hang out there. That's something you can never do. You got to pull it back. You know, we maybe I always tell him maybe you got to give him two shots. Yeah. You know, and if you keep the punch hanging, you know, first of all he can counter. Second of all, you can't give him two shots. So I, I worked on that, and I tell every every person that I train, I said, okay, a, a technique, technical is very important, yeah. but stamina is, you know, that should be your number one priority. You know, if right. you go in with extreme stamina, you're going to be very hard to beat. First of all, it's going to be hard to knock you out because mm -hmm. you're in shape, you know, you, you got a higher tolerance. Yeah. And second of all, you just can keep going. You break your opponent, you know, and, and especially in the beginning of fights, you know, when everything is new, yeah. people lack stamina. They focus too much on the fighting, which, which you actually should keep very simple. I sent him a bunch of combinations that if he does them that way, yeah. it's very high success rate. You're going to nail somebody with it. You know, I, 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 would okay. give this, I, I work always like uh, six combinations only for a whole fight, three in a clinch. Three outside the clinch. And people go, oh, you don't teach him more? Yeah, for the rest, we teach him simple counters. Yeah. You know, you don't want to teach people too much. You know, you want to say, okay, this he does really well, this he does really well, let's work on that, and let's make combinations out of that. And, um, and, and that's what he did, man. He, he really tuned it up with his stamina, and then you can see right away that he just simply can keep going. It, it really was, I mean, the, the difference between that fight and the one before it was astounding. It was completely different fighters, so... Uh, uh, it, it obviously worked very, very well. Um, his next fight is against a Jordanian uh, jiu-jitsu uh, fighter, Haider Rashid. Did he have a chance to speak with Ahmed about this upcoming fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent him some things. You know, I, uh, of course, I'm not going to say what, what yeah. but I, I, I saw some flaws there and, and mistakes that he made. And I watched also earlier fights from him. And, he, yeah. and even in the ground game, he has some uh, flaws that he, that he forgets, some basic stuff. And, um, yeah. and we worked on that. And uh, hopefully he really, you know, put people in that position and, and went for that certain reversal or counter techniques. And uh, I, I think he's going to do good because he's listening all the time. You know, I, I send him little video clips yeah. of little drills. You know, I, I tape it behind my computer. Yeah. I say, okay, watch out for this, do this, do this, do this, and I'll send the clip. <laughs> and then, uh, well, he works on it. So, so he's kind of like a sponge and he just soaks up all the information, huh? I can only imagine, you know, if you have a guy like that and you can put your hands on him, like literally, you know, be there for him, then... I mean, then he will improve even even more. You know, the details I gave always yeah. are very, they look like it's not, but I always tell the people, I say, read the details. Because if you do the combination without all these little details I write, it's not going to work. You know, in mm -hmm. fighting, there's a lot of acting involved. Yeah. You know, and it's like, uh, if I lower myself with a right body shot, if I do this every time, when I throw a right body shot, soon enough after three body shots, I don't even have to throw a body shot anymore. If I just move low, lower myself, he already assumes it's going to be a body yeah. shot. You know, and I work on little tricks like that. That works really well against yeah. fighters. You know, you can trick him to open up and to you know let the guard down and then go for a knockout. Yeah. 
That's that's something he utilized. I, I forgot in which fight, but it uh, it's almost reminded me of uh, Ronaldinho, the football player, when his no look pass. He doesn't look where he's going to pass, so you know it comes very un <laughs> unsuspecting. Uh, you, you, I think it was in your Joe Rogan interview you mentioned um, about striking. If you go to the body and you go to the body and you keep on going to the body and then you crouch as if you're going for the body, but actually your arms are going up for the head. That it's it's one of the ways that you could sort of fool your opponent to. Uh, you know, mask the shot. Let's say it's you know it's a, there's a lot of acting. like again it's all it's all acting. It's uh, I even point at spots. Uh -huh. I give when I give you a low kick, I'll point with my left finger at a low kick and I start kicking. Yeah. And I do this over two and a half rounds. And suddenly when I point low, mm -hmm. I'll keep I look low, but I kick high. You know, and everybody falls for that. Once you start believing my gestures the whole time, what I'm doing is I'm painting a picture. I always say. Yeah. And then I break that picture. You so I give you an, an um, how do I say it? Uh, you never want to have an, uh, a pattern. Yeah, that's what I say. You never okay. want to have a pattern. But in in fighting, I give them a pattern the whole time. I do the whole the same thing. Yeah. You know, I have to watch out, of course, that they don't going to counter my pattern because if I do too many times, I have to watch out. Right. But I cannot let let them get used to that pattern, and then suddenly I break the pattern, and and that most of the time that's the knockout. Okay. Well, I guess I guess once they they get settled into a pattern, they they assume it's going to continue, and then uh, that's it. Yeah. You know, and you can't do it too much. Yeah. You know, like when I in the beginning of the uh, fight, I lift my left leg up. Yeah. You see me doing this in a lot of fights, and it's just to see what my opponent does to read in. And if he brings his hands right away yeah. down, you know, thinking it's a front kick, now I know this. Now I'm not going to do right away the same thing because he will expect that. Yeah. You know that I set him up now. So I just go start punching, moving, I'll go for a takedown, and then I try it out one more time. Yeah. You know, when he brings his hands down again, I'll put an ace in my pocket, yeah. and then at the end of the round, suddenly I present, you know, bring my knee up, and then I come over the top with a strike. Right. You know, it's, it, it's, it's basic stuff if you think about it, but a lot of people, they, they can't control their nerves. I always tell people it's the hardest thing in fighting is to bring the game that you have in the nice and safe dojo to bring that to a to a cage or to a, to a ring, yeah. you know, and if you can bring the same game there, and chances are very high you're going to be a champ, you know, and I think that was one of my, my strongest points. I was, listen, in training, I, you know, it's not to say, oh, I'm good, but I, I never had problems in training with nobody, yeah. you know, but I, uh, even in fighting, I always thought I can totally control. I would hear conversations between people in the first row after a fight, I would tell them what they were talking about. I would no tell way. the corner to, to shut up because, like, for instance, the <laughs> Kosaka fight, I knocked him out because I wanted to give Kosaka a right high kick. And then Mari Smith, he says, watch out for the high kick because he's a striker <laughs> and he could beat it. So right away, I switched it to a straight. Yeah. And that, that was the beginning of the knockout. And afterwards, I told him, I said, Dad, you got to be quiet. And he says, boss, you're probably the only fighter who listens to the other corner. <laughs> and, uh, but that's what I always did to make myself calm. I also never had a teacher. I taught everything myself. So in my corner was always my manager. You know, the only thing my manager needed to say is that when I would get hit right. to stay calm because I'm a hot at, you know, mm -hmm. I want to pay him back. And although in, in Japan that disappeared, I didn't really need it anymore. But it's, it's still always good, boss, stay calm. You know, take your time, take your time, you know, so you don't overcommit. Because in Japan, the fight's for 30 minutes, wow. you know, and you don't want to shoot everything out in the beginning of the fight. <laughs> and, and then it'd be like, oh, what if Shana would cross you, who yeah. takes every punishment that you give him, and he got 27 minutes to go. That's, <laughs> that's big trouble. That's true. Didn't he used to put, uh, write, uh, write the letter R on the back of your fists? Yeah, yeah, I did that. So too, and and coincidentally, it's a it's a Dutch word, uh, rustig, which also starts with an R. It means the same as relax. Okay. You know, and that was just for because I was such a hot ad. Yeah. But um, but Japan totally changed me. Like when you saw, saw pictures of my Thai boxing in Holland. Yeah. Every picture, like my facials were like freaking animalistic. I was right. trying to kill people there and hit them out of the ring. Yeah. You know, and when I fought in Japan, I came back after the first fight. They showed me the the video and they showed me the the books and the magazines with the pictures. And I was like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" I was so relaxed, mm -hmm. like my facial wouldn't change when I would hit somebody or when they would hit me. Yeah. I just stayed uh, totally relaxed, and it, it changed my whole whole game. I think it's the, the Japanese people. You know, it's so quiet there, and people. Yeah. really want to see you win. They really want the best guy to win. And it doesn't matter if you're a foreigner 
or you're Japanese, you know. And uh, it blew me away after the first time. I mean, wow. people putting babies in my hands and, and bowing on the street. <laughs> it was the weirdest experience ever. No way. So, so they're, they're fair sportsmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much, yeah. That's incredible. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you, I remember when we were in Dubai, you mentioned um, the, the one guy you really like to watch fighting these days in UFC is Aldo. So now yeah. we have a tremendous fight coming up. I mean, with Aldo and Pettis. Um, what, what do you make of that one? You know, that's such a hard fight. Um, oh, Pettis is a guy mm -hmm. that you can beat um, when you nonstop pressure him. Constantly mm -hmm. pressure him, like Clay Gita did. Right. You know, technically, Pettis is better than Gita. But Gita has that animalistic fighting style, pushing, pushing, pushing. And you can be the best striker in the world, but if you get pushed backwards, it yeah. takes away your striking. It's very hard to move backwards while striking. Yeah. You know, you, you're jamming the punches, so to say. And, um, and, and that's the style. And, and Aldo doesn't do that. He's also, uh, because he's got the fast twitch fibers, that means he's very explosive, but that also means that he has to really control his, his breathing and his, and, and his output. He cannot yeah. go crazy because he's going to run out of gas because he's got, he's got the fast, fast twitch fibers. I had the same thing. I had to fight, you know, I can burst, 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 and you got to take your time to relax. Yeah. And um, against a guy like Pettis, you know, who is all over the place with these crazy techniques, you know, that could be, that could be a problem. Although Pettis has never been kicked yeah. that hard uh, as, as Aldo does. Then again, he works with Duke Rufus. I know Duke Rufus is a very good coach. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they came up with something, either a block or a counter for those low kicks. Although it's very hard because he's, he's, uh, he kicks yeah. very fast and very powerful. Very Roman Deckers like, I always said. Like, ah, like, like the late Ramon Deckers, yeah. You know, yeah. We, we got to see uh, all those uh, kicks against, uh, was it Uriah? And that yeah. was, uh, my God, I mean, at, at the end of it, uh, I, I don't know how he stayed standing, but good, good on him, you know, good on him. You know, you know what you should do? You go uh, type in Google Uriah Faber's leg two uh -huh. weeks after Aldo. Google that and a picture show up. Okay. You, you, you have no clue what you're going to see. <laughs> it doesn't even look like a leg anymore. It's a dead piece of meat. It's the weirdest thing ever, man. It's all purple. It's yeah. very scary. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm sure he felt that for a while because that, that was brutal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had to drain his leg, you know. And, and, and for Faber to hang in there and not to go down on those low kicks that he got, yeah, you can tell how much heart that guy has. That's true. That's true. He, he's not one to, to uh, give up easily. There's also um, there's also another big one coming up, Weidman against Silva. Now, it's a bit surprising. I mean, Weidman is undefeated and Silva is obviously Anderson Silva. But uh, a lot of people are, are sort of predicting that Weidman's going to upset the champ. Uh, you know, from Georges St. Pierre to, uh, to a number in the MMA community. What, what do you think of that one? Do you think Weidman has the tools to, uh, to, to oh, oh. defeat Silva? You know, the, the, everybody looks at the Chiel Sonnen fight. Now, first of yeah. all, the first Chiel Sonnen fight, I don't think that um, Silva was Silva. He had a bad day. Everybody can have a bad day. You know, it looked like almost he didn't want to come out of the second round. Yeah. Uh, after the first break, he was, there was something going on with Silva, it almost looked like. Still, yeah. Sonnen could take him to the ground. Now, why uh, Sonnen has no power. I mean, he, yeah. he's, he's, he's shouting around that he hit him 320 times. The guy didn't have a mark on his face. You right. know, so Whiteman does have power. He has big power on the ground, ground and pound, and he's got a really tight submission game. Yeah. You know, so if it goes to the ground that Whiteman be there on top, you know, that could be a big problem, yes. Stylistically, this is a very bad matchup for Silva. Then again, this is Silva we're talking about. That's true. You know? He might weather the storm for three rounds and pull the same thing off that he did with Sonnen at the end. Although he's not going to submit him. You know, Sonnen, yeah, he's been caught like four times in a triangle choke. You know, there's some people that they don't fight the defense for it, it almost looks like. And I, I don't, Whiteman, yeah. White, I, I did some homework on him because we were going to have him on a show. Ah. I, I, he did um, his first grappling tournament, uh, which it was, I don't remember anymore, but I believe he, he beat 12 people all by submission. Okay. And uh, so th this guy's really good on the ground. He's got really strong uh, power, ground and pound, and he's a really good wrestler. 
See, so that's that's the only reason people, of course, say, wait a minute, well, if it goes to the ground and you can hold it on the ground just like Sonnen did, mm -hmm. but with the power from Whiteman, yeah, then he's going to have then a problem. Have the tools, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be an interesting one, you know. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's everyone's sort of uh, interested to see if, if, if Weidman is, is as, you know, as potent as he's made out to be and if someone can actually beat Silva. <laughs> so... We'll it's it, yeah. Anybody, anybody can anybody can get beat on any given day. They always say that you know. Even Silva. Yeah. I mean, he got heel hooked a long time ago uh, by Rio Chona, and I believe yeah. in the at Pride Fighting Championship. So you know, it's all. But then again, also that fight, he was also not at the stop. So if Silva really takes this fight to the heart, and and he will, because yeah. everybody will tell him the same story over and over again. So he's going to be angry, yeah. and he's going to train harder. And, uh, you know, then God knows, man. They train with a good group of guys there. That uh, that whole team, they, they are very strong. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's going to be an exciting one. Um, go, go, going back to Ahmed, do, do you think we're going to see him use the liver shot in, uh, <laughs> in, in this fight? You know, it's... it's um, Mercedes is is fairly new to the game. It's not like he has 20 fighters on his belt. And and the body shots, most of the time you see this with seasoned uh, fighters. Uh, because the the simple fact is that once you fight and, and you're still early in the game, so to say, your mind tells you, go for the head, go for the head, you know? Yeah. For some reason, the mind tries to stay away from the body, trying to tell you that the body is not effective enough. Yet it's very effective, you know? And, but... That's the the mind just works simple tricks hmm. like that, and um, you know he needs to make sure that he stays calm. And if he goes for it, yeah, he should go in the later rounds. If he goes to the later rounds, and when he rocks him to the head, that's the moment when he start protecting his head. Yeah. Then you want to go for the body. That's another thing that I always talk about. People, you know, I I, I can't understand that that uh, you know if you hit somebody really hard in the head, he's rocked. Then everybody keeps continue hitting the head, and I go all my students and say, guys, what is he protecting? He's protecting the head, so go for the body. Hit him really freaking hard in the body; it will force his hands down because otherwise he's going to go down with body shots. Mm. Once the hands go down, you go back on top. But your mind is a weird thing; it tells you, no, you got to do it now, you got to do it now, you got to do it now. You know, they they think your mind thinks that ten seconds or twenty, thirty seconds, he's recovered again, but it it isn't like that. Yeah. You know, so if he just can stay calm, you know, and go for headshots and suddenly he dazes his opponent and that's the moment he goes for the body shots, that will be great. You know, it, nothing would amaze, amaze me with him anymore because, like you said, he improved dramatically last time. Uh, he did, he did very much so. So I guess the, the, the key is for uh, Ahmed to remain uh, rustic and, uh, you know, seize the opportunity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Ahmed Busseri fights on the 15th of June in uh, Amman against Haidar Al Rashid for the title. Boss, it's always an absolute pleasure. Um, you know, when are we going to see you next in, in this part of the world? Oh, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, let's uh, have, have a talk there with, uh, with our, our friends and uh, see when everything is going to happen. Awesome. Uh, then I'll be there. It's probably, I don't know. Ten months or eight months or something like that, I guess. Amazing. Well, you know, ho hopefully it's it's eight months or shorter, and uh, we you know we can catch you weekly on uh, Inside MMA on HDNet uh, or on uh, YouTube Inside MMA, and you can catch on Boss's Weekly Show uh, along with Kenny Rice. And, yeah, and uh, oh, we, we we recently changed our to to Access TV though. They said ah. they started working together with uh, AEG and uh, and another company. The oh, I forget always his name. The guy who who uh, who's the host for American Idol. Ah, uh, uh, oh gosh, I, I I must admit I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, it's uh, it's uh, Access TV, but it's you know yeah. when when people have uh, AGNet, it's automatically the same channel, so it doesn't matter. It is. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, and you've got the movie coming out in spring of next year, which we're going to look out for. It's uh, is there a title or there is no title yet on it? Yeah, it's called Mercy Rule. Mercy Rule apparently is an is an uh, a term in in baseball that when one team is so so powerful that they just annihilate their opponents and that they really save them from an embarrassment, and that's what they call Mercy, mercy Rule. Mercy Rule. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that, that was the first thing I looked up when I got the title. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, but so um, movie in spring, uh, weekly show on uh, on uh, Inside MMA, and we'll hopefully be seeing you uh, soon again in our part of the world. And we'll definitely keep you updated on Ahmed's fight. I'll send you a text message uh, fight night. I'll let you know how it went. Oh, perfect! Yeah, yeah. Please, please do, please do, and I'll uh, I'll send him an email tomorrow. Awesome, Boss, Thank you so much. Have an awesome uh, evening, and uh, I'm off to the airport to head uh, head over to your part of the world. So <laughs> sounds good. Travel safe, Yusuf. Thanks, Thank buddy. You. Speak to you soon. Yo. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.